So now in this video we're going to look at the op amp as a comparator. I'm using the LM358, one out of two of them. The one that you're not using, ideally you should set as a voltage follower. Uh, the non-inverting input connected to ground and then a voltage follower to uh, keep the output to ground. Um, but we're not going to worry about that in this video. So I have a fixed uh, voltage, half of the supply voltage to be exact. If I'm using 5 volts, it should be about 2.5 volts at the inverting input. That's those two resistors there. And then we have our signal. So this is the non-inverting input. The output wants to be more like the non-inverting input than the inverting input. And so the trim pot is set down to zero volts. That's less than half. And when I turn it somewhere about halfway, it's going to flip from low to high, as you can see right there. And uh, we don't have hysteresis with this. There's a pretty much an exact spot. And if you get right to the middle, it might do some uh, goofy stuff. But when you're definitely um, higher than the reference uh, voltage, then the output's high. When you're definitely lower than the reference voltage, the output is low. So now zooming in on the drawing first off, we have the pin layout for the LM358. Again, it has uh, two op amps there. This one we are not using. We're using one out of two of them, and that's what's uh, indicated right there. Uh, we're using the one on the left side. So the plus right there was our lowest uh, pin when it came to the op amp. You have to power the integrated circuit, positive and negative. Right above it was the inverting input. That's where I showed the two resistors. And then we had our output, uh, which was had a blue LED coming from the positive supply and a red LED uh, headed towards the uh, negative supply. And the blue LED has a 1000 ohm resistor because it's naturally brighter. And then the red LED has a lower value resistor. Um, it's not as bright, plus we don't get the full five volts at uh, the output even under ideal uh, circumstances. Um, so we need more uh, current for the red LED. Using a 10K trim pot, but any value trim pot will work. And uh, if you go too low in value, you just waste a lot of current and the component will get hot. And now we'll look at my demonstration circuit. So we got positive supply to the long lead, the anode, short lead, the cathode down there. If you don't uh, trim them, 1000 ohm resistor. And we know that that's connected to ground because it's lit up positive working its way to negative. I turn the trim pot more than halfway. You can see those are equal value. You probably see the color code there. Um, so we know that's half of the supply voltage to the uh, inverting input. So down here we have more than half. So we got the red LED light up. You can see it's headed to ground right there. So you know that uh, you know it may not be a perfect connection but uh, basically the output right there is connected to the positive supply as good as it can do. And I already had my uh, two channel oscilloscope here from the uh, last video. So I'm going to turn it on. I need to change a couple things also. I want to uh, kind of show this. First off, there's uh, some stuff we don't see because the display was hiding it. So uh, that's the two voltages. I don't have them measuring anything right now. Uh, but then we were using uh, 10 volts. Now we're only using 5 volts. So instead of uh, 2 volts per division, so that it goes 2, 4, 6, 8, I want uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And um, so when I go to the uh, channel button right there, channel 1, then uh, we got uh, one right there, I believe if I go to the right, yep, went to five volts division. Now it's going down to one volt uh, per division. And then I can change the channel by pressing F1 right there. Now we're at channel two. And uh, so they're both zero volts, so they're gonna be in the same spot there. But I can do the same thing. I'm gonna do the, uh, that was right arrow, left arrow. Now we're down to one volt per division. So I needed to end that scene because my battery was getting low, but I think we were there. It cleared on its own after a period of time. But I can hit channel again to uh, just get our display right there. So I'm not sure which one is channel 1 and uh, which one is channel 2 right here. And uh, so we'll just go to the output uh, with this one. Uh, why not? So that's the top row right there. And uh, so yeah, that was our yellow one right there. And uh, that's probably going to be, it's the output. That's a lower voltage than what we're going to have at our signal because a couple of things. This is not in a rail to rail op amp. And uh, so there, um, full supply voltage, five volts, as we said, uh, five squares. You can see it's falling about a volt and a half short, which is kind of what I expect right there. When it comes to the output, if I remove the LED, it's going to do a bit better. Um, I accidentally yanked the uh, resistor too, just meant to grab the LED. Um, so the output cannot provide the full positive supply voltage 
uh, no matter what you do with the single supply op amp and uh, rail to rail ones can if there's no load but if there's a load the load's probably going to drag it down um so in this case um the load is uh, uh i stuck that to the inverting input um so yeah that's something uh generally you shouldn't rewire stuff when the power is off um but if you notice the circuit's not working uh, the right way you probably stuck a component in the wrong spot so in any case yeah the output does better when there's no load but since it's a single supply op amp um, it cannot get to the full uh, positive supply. Now it can get to the full negative supply, but you don't see that there because we have a load. Uh, so it's about a volt difference from the negative supply. You can see the trim pot got to the negative supply. And this doesn't follow the uh, signal voltage. The output voltage does not follow the uh, signal voltage like the voltage follower in the last video. It jumps between two states because it's comparing which one is higher. We have it wired as a non-inverting comparator. So when the signal is higher than our reference voltage, the output is high, a higher voltage. And uh, when the signal is a lower voltage, remember it's halfway, about 2.5 volts. Then the reference voltage, then the output goes low. You can see it's falling short. Now, I uh, haven't measured this yet, but I know if I pluck the blue LED so that the output doesn't have to provide any current then it can get to ground right there. So it's very important that you understand the limitations of the output whenever you are using an integrated circuit. Um, so it's not exciting stuff, but it's important you understand so that you know how your circuitry will work with it. And uh, oftentimes, like we're just lighting LEDs. That's all we care about here. If it's really important that uh, this particular op amp gets the output down to ground, then instead of you know, powering a load, you want to send it to a different uh, amplifier that just looks at the voltage that you uh, do there and it outputs the voltage that you want. You use the weakness of uh, one component and uh, you send it to a component that can do the job uh, better. Um, just like uh, the trim pot, we can adjust the voltage, but the uh, voltage follower video, um, I talked about how it doesn't power a load the voltage will get uh, thrown off. So we send it to the op amp as a voltage follower and it delivers the uh, voltage that you wanna set, you know. So in any case, rambled on long enough. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see ya in the next video.